Good afternoon. Thank you for participating in today's webinar on the new Common Fund program, Enhancing the Diversity of the NIH-Funded Workforce. We have completed the first three uh, portions of today's webinar agenda, which included first an introduction and a background about the program presented by Dr. Elizabeth Wilder, who oversees the Common Fund, followed by an overview of NIMHD's role in the program presented by Dr. Joyce Hunter, our Deputy Director, an overview of the BUILD initiative presented by Dr. Toya Randolph, program official for BUILD, and an overview of the NRMN, or National Research Net Mentoring Network initiative presented by Dr. Pamela Thornton, the program official for NRMN. At this time, Dr. Thornton will return to present information about the Coordination and Evaluation Center funding opportunity announcement. Thank you, Dr. Sayer. Good afternoon, everyone. I also want to thank you for joining today's webinar and expressing interest in this very important topic. Again, I'm Pamela Thornton, the program official for the NIH Coordination and Evaluation Center, also referred to as the CEC. The Funding Opportunity Announcement, or FOA, number for the CEC is RFA-RM-13-015. Before we begin, let's review a few logistics about the webinar today. First, all participants will be in listening mode. This means you will not be able to ask questions verbally or using the chat function. If you have questions about the program or if you need technical assistance, please submit your questions using the email address on the screen, and that is B-U-I-L-D-N-R-M-N-C-E-C at NIH.gov build nrmncec at nih.gov. All questions submitted today will be de-identified and answered during the webinar as time permits. Also, as a reminder, the slides and recording of today's webinar will be available to you on our NIH Common Fund website within the next several weeks. The website address is also shown at the bottom of your, of your screen. It is https colon backslash, backslash, common fund, period, NIH, period, gov, backslash, diversity. The outline for today's webinar includes seven topics. In general, I will cover the topics in the same order they appear in the FOA, which include the purpose, the award information, eligibility information, followed by application instructions, and the timeline. Part six, which covers application review information, will be presented by Dr. Carol Swartz, who is from the NIH Center for Scientific Review, or CSR. After her presentation, I'll return to discuss some frequently asked questions and open the floor here to our NIH team who's in the room to respond to any additional questions submitted by you during the webinar. Now let's discuss the purpose of the CEC. Overall, the CEC will coordinate consortium-wide activities and evaluate BUILD and NRMN programs. The CEC will also facilita facilitate the development of consortium-wide hallmarks, including core competencies, of successful biomedical research career progression and examination of the impact of BUILD and NRMN programs according to those hallmarks. The CEC will facilitate consortium-wide discussions of approaches, progress, and lesson le lessons learned, and will serve as the focal point for dissemination of information to the broad research training and mentoring communities. This next slide is a recap of the Common Fund Diversity Program's overarching strategy. And again, the CEC is one of three interrelated initiatives being implemented to enhance the diversity of the NIH-funded workforce. As mentioned earlier by Dr. Sayer, the BUILD initiative was reviewed in the agenda earlier today by Dr. Toya Randolph, followed by a review I covered on the NRMN initiative. Specifically, the goals for the CEC include identifying fundamental attributes of successful biomedical researchers, that is, hallmarks of success, including core competencies for each career stage. 
identifying metrics for site-specific goals, assessing the impact of approaches used by each site on the attainment of hallmarks of success by participants, coordinating data acquisition across sites, disseminating consortium endorsed practices and lessons learned to transform form training and mentoring programs across the nation. And the goals also include providing administrative support for the Executive Steering Committee and its subcommittees and coordinating the annual grantees meeting and other consortium-wide activities as required. On this slide, we provide a few examples of CEC activities that align with the goals that you just heard. They include establishing standardized evaluation approaches and data collection protocols for the BUILD and NRMN initiatives. Collaborating the BUILD and NRM awardees to iteratively assess the impact of new approaches on participants' perceptions and attitudes towards biomedical research careers and the impact of the, those approaches on attainment of hallmark, hallmarks of success. Another example of an activity includes conducting an, over, an outcome evaluation of BUILD and NRMN according to consortium-specific or specified metrics, including an evaluation of interim milestones when applicable. Also an activity includes developing novel and innovative quantitative and qualitative approaches to identify the unique impact of BUILD and NRMN initiatives on participant outcomes through the use of appropriate, compar appropriate comparison groups, statistical techniques, or other evaluation strategies. Three more activities include enabling effective communications across BUILD and NRMN institutions to facilitate CEC objectives, and organizing and coordinating executive steering committee meetings and assisting that steering committee in organizing appropriate subcommittees. And a final example that we offer on this slide is disseminating evaluation results to relevant stakeholders, which we believe will become very important to the program. So overall, I want to emphasize regarding the purpose of the CEC is here. The CEC will serve as a critical organizing function for the Diversity Program Consortium as a whole, facilitate the development of consortium-wide goals, design instruments and measures of success toward individual initiative and consortium-wide goals, and serve as a focal point for communication and dissemination. Now that we've talked about the purpose for CEC, let's look at award information. The award mechanism for the CEC, as many of you know, is a U54. This is also known as a cooperative agreement. A cooperative agreement is a support mechanism used when there will be, will be substantial federal scientific and or programmatic involvement that is above and beyond the normal stewardship role in awards. What substantial involvement means is that after the awards are made, NIH staff will assist, guide, coordinate, or participate in project activities. To achieve the program goals for this cooperative agreement, the CEC awardee will play an important role by maintaining an ongoing collaboration with all awardees from the BUILD and NRMN projects through the Diversity Program Consortium. The NIH Common Fund intends to commit $1.75 million in FY14 for a single CEC award, and that is contingent upon availability of funds. Application budgets may not exceed that amount in total costs annually, which do include institutional or consortia FNA, also known as indirect costs. The project period is five years. Down at the bottom of your screen, you see an important note and we want you to know that an evaluation of the CEC over the five years of the program will determine, the will determine whether the initiative will be continued for an additional five years as configured, continued with modifications, or discontinued. If warranted, a funding opportunity announcement may be issued for the second five-year period, which also may be subject to an open competition. Some additional award information is here. The CEC applications are expected to provide a compelling description
construction of an evaluation and coordination framework that takes into consideration the initiative specific outcomes in addition to the collective goals and or outcomes of the program. Since the BUILD and NRMN awardees have not yet been identified, the CEC applications are not expected to provide a detailed plan involving specific institutional institutions, sites, networks, and or projects. Now turning attention to eligibility information. Eligible institutions and organizations include academic institutions, professional societies, student organizations, or other relevant organizations. Non-domestic entities or non-domestic components of U.S. organizations are not eligible to apply. Applications may not include foreign components as well, as defined in the NIH grants policy statement. Please note that any individual with, with the skills, knowledge, and resources necessary to carry out the proposed research as the program director or principal investigator is invited to work with his or her organization to develop an application for support. Additional application instructions is on this slide. It highlights some of the considerations for each component and core to consider as you prepare your application. Across the top of the table are titles of the components or cores, followed by a graphic underneath and a brief description of information followed for each. What I'll do is briefly review them starting from left to right. At the far left first is the overall component. It is important in this component to describe the overall model and vision to assess efficacy of diverse training and mentoring approaches. Applicants should also remember to address human subjects. Next, in the administrative core, a plan or description should be provided for items such as the organizational and governance structure, the roles and responsibilities, plans to develop consortium agreements such as hallmarks of success, excuse me, plans to, do, to develop consortium agreements, hallmarks of success, and measures for each career stage. In this administrative core, you also want to include a management plan with descriptions for the required CEC steering committee and other committees or boards to help manage CEC activities. The next core is the data coordination core. And in that core, you should include items such as the framework for data coordination activities across BUILD and NRM, NRM, NRMN, as well as strategies to promote standardization of data, data monitoring and oversight plans that include things such as data quality, missing data, privacy, and security. You want to also include plans, committees, work groups, and such to guide, support, or implement data coordination activities, and also describe personnel and other committees as needed. The final core for the CEC is the evaluation core. Under this core, applicants should provide descriptions for the theoretical model or conceptual framework guiding evaluation activities, likely comparison groups and methods, preliminary description of attributes of successful biomedical researchers, along with evaluation strategies and data analysis strategies, and planned committees or work, work groups, again, to guide, support, or implement evaluation activities. I want to emphasize for this slide that it really does provide an overview of the type of information that should be included in each component or core, and the content of the table is not all-inclusive. Applicants should therefore read the instructions carefully to ensure that you've covered all of the requirements. Additional application instructions involves evaluation information for the CEC. The CEC is expected to develop evaluation metrics and methods to assess the attainment of hallmarks of career success including core competencies by BUILD and NRM, NRMN participants at multiple career stages. This effort will include identifying consortium-wide evaluation questions as well as short 
intermediate, and long-term metrics deemed appropriate for conducting assessments during various time frames of the award period. At min minimum, I'd like to cover the core data that will be included. The core data will include completion of degrees, postdoctoral research training, and entrance into graduate programs, postdoctoral research training, or obtaining a faculty position in a biomedical field. Another minimum core data will include involvement in biomedical research appropriate to the given career stage. In addition to authorship on publications in peer-reviewed journals and receipt of NIH or other peer-reviewed grants or fellowships. Another evaluation component involves an assessment of the CEC itself. The NIH will conduct an evaluation of the CEC continuously over the first five years of the program. Key metrics the NIH may use to determine, to help to, to help determine, to help to determine, excuse me, whether the CEC goals or outcomes have been met include, but are not limited to, the following. Effectiveness of organizational and oversight of consortia-wide meetings. Provision of expert assistance in supporting the development of consortium-wide evaluation protocols and common evaluation measures. Demonstration of expertise in developing and maintaining data management systems for the collection of evaluation data. Effective promotion of collaborations across program sites to support common constructs and instruments and support procedures. Also included is utilization of strategies to facilitate effective communication consortium wide. And then a final example here is development of high impact ways to disseminate new consortium wide research findings to key stakeholders. Another theme that we're emphasizing for the CEC's responsibility. Okay, this, this slide is an important slide that gives you information about key timeline, uh, timeline periods for the award. The first document that may be submitted is a letter of intent. The letters which were originally due on February the 18th, 2014, are now due on March the 2nd. While these letters are optional or not required, they do give the NIH, NIH team a general sense of the number of applications that may be submitted and will help us plan a great deal for review. The application receipt date, which was originally published as March the 18th, 2014, has been changed to April the 2nd. The CSR peer review will be completed by July 2014. The NIMHD Advisory Council review and the NIH Common Fund review will be completed in September making the earliest award start date September 2014. And you'll see here a note that the program kickoff meeting will be held in Bethesda, Maryland, no later than November 2014. That means the CEC awardee will need to budget properly to, in order to attend this meeting. For information about the, up, the dates, the new dates that are updated on this timeline, please refer to the notice number NOT dash rm dash one four dash zero zero five. Now this does conclude the presentation I have about the application instructions for the CEC. I'd like to remind you that the we are still accepting questions via the email at buildnrmncc at nih.gov. Please send your questions if you have them. At this time, Dr. Carol Swartz from the NIH Center for Scientific Review will review application information. Thank you, Dr. Thornton. I will go over some aspects of the review process, including uh, criterion uh, review, including review criteria that will be important to address in your application. Applications received are assigned to the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities. The Center for Scientific Review staff assess applications for completeness. NIMHD program staff assess applications for responsiveness. A scientific review officer from CSR assembles a panel of experts 
from the extramural scientific community to perform review. Assigned reviewers, at least three per application, assess applications based on established review criteria. Those include significance, investigators, innovation, approach, and environment. At the peer review meeting, applications undergo a selection process in which only those deemed to have the highest scientific and technical merit, generally the top half of applications, will be discussed and assigned an overall impact score. For discussed applications, assigned reviewers summarize their prepared critiques for the group and an open discussion follows. Final scoring of overall impact is conducted by private ballot. The final overall impact score is based on the average of all voting reviewers and those scores range from 10, which is exceptional, to 90 or 4. The overall impact is the likelihood that the project will exert sustained transformative influence on the field. This evaluation is based on consideration of the five core review criteria, significance, investigators, innovation, approach, and environment, and additional review criteria as applicable for the project proposed and specified in the FOA, or Funding Opportunity Announcement. This table gives examples of the kinds of information that should be provided for each of the five core criteria. Note that there are examples that are for standard review and examples that are specific for the build, for the uh, CEC FOA, excuse me. The five criteria are listed across the top. Significance, investigators, innovation, approach, and environment. We will look at these each specifically. So if you look at significance, for the standard review criterion, a question such as the following uh, should be answered. If the aims are achieved, how will knowledge be advanced? To address the specific questions for the CEC FOA under significance, you might answer questions such as, are the overall plans for the coordination and evaluation to be conducted by the CEC likely to foster a collaborative environment across the consortium? Under investigators, standard review criteria are the investigators appropriately trained and well suited to carry out this work. Under examples specific for the CEC FOA, has the PI or PD demonstrated the ability to coordinate complex consortia to establish and implement joint goals? Under innovation, standard review criteria, is a refinement, improvement, or new application of theoretical concepts, approaches, or methodologies, instrumentation, or interventions proposed. Specific for the CEC FOA, does the application include innovative, qualitative, or quantitative approaches, methodologies, or study designs to evaluate the effectiveness or impact of the build and NRMN programs? Under approach, standard review criteria, are the conceptual framework and planned activities appropriate to the aims of the network? Specific for the CEC FOA under approach, are potential evaluation methods robust and is the vision for comparing across build and NRMN sites compelling? Under environment, standard review criteria, does the environment in which the work will be done contribute to the probability of success? More specifically for the CEC FOA, is the environment of the awardee institution adequate to support the CEC in accomplishing its goal of managing and evaluating the diverse build and NRM activities? Note that all of these are examples only. Applicants should consider the entire list of questions for each criterion provided in the FOA, both under the, the standard review criteria and examples specific for the CEC FOA. 
In addition to these five core criteria, reviewers will con consider these additional review criteria. Administrative core, data coordination core, and evaluation core. In addition, protections for human subjects, inclusions of women, minorities, and children, vertebrate animals, and biohazards will also be considered. Reviewers will factor these additional review criteria along with the standard five review criteria into the overall impact score. This table shows examples of the additional review criteria and questions that you might address under these um, individual review criteria. For example, under administrative core, does the vision for coordination across build and NRMN sites promote a collaborative environment? Are key administrative personnel experienced in the organization of meetings, workshops, and other networking activities? And are the personnel appropriate for record keeping, website development, and other communications tasks? Under Data Coordination Core, is a clear and logical framework or conceptual model for the coordination of data collection across build sites and the NRMN provided? Are planned committees or workshops involved in data coordination activities appropriate? Under Evaluation Core, is the theoretical model or conceptual framework guiding evaluation? Are appropriate data analytic strategies proposed to understand factors associated with entry and success in biomedical research careers? Again, remember that the, the criteria listed above serve as examples only. Applicants con should consider the entire list of questions for each core that are contained in the funding opportunity announcement. At this time, I will turn this over to Pamela Thornton, who will uh, cover frequently asked questions. Thank you, Dr. Swartz. Before the team and the NIH team in the room responds to the questions that you've submitted through the email during the webinar, I'd like to just review a few FAQs that we have received before the webinar. And the first one has been actually a, 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 a frequently asked questions a question across the three initiatives. And that is, <clears throat> excuse me, if using the multiple PI option for the application, which institution or institutions will be considered the applicant institution? The answer is the multiple PI option, as you know, is allowed for this application. However, First note that only one institution will be considered the applicant institution. The applicant institution will be identified as the contact PI's institutional home or employer. Collabor collaborators from other institutions do not count against the application limit for those institutions. And then finally, please note that approvals to determine issues such as which institution is designated the applicant institution as well as the number of collaborators and their roles at, are based in part on decisions made by the collaborators themselves as well as the applicant institutions decisions or policies. The NIH does not make these decisions. Next question. How specifically should the plans for coordination and evaluation be described in the application if the build and NRM, NRMN projects are unknown? The CEC applicant should describe a compelling vision as well as potential approaches and strategies regarding coordination and evaluation of the BUILD and NRMN initiatives. It will be not expected because the projects will be unknown for you to specify specific projects, institutions, or other involvement in those applications. Can a CEC applicant also be listed on a BUILD or NRMN? NRMN application. Another very popular question across the initiatives. Yes, eligibility collaborate, eligible collaborators may be involved in multiple applications. That means you may be involved in a CEC application, a BUILD application, as well as an NRMN application. However, it's important to note that the CEC awardee cannot receive funds, may not and cannot receive funds from a BUILD or NRMN award. 
That means if a build or NRMN awardee includes a partnership with what ends up being a CEC awardee, the CEC awardee to the build or NRMN project may be required to withdraw participation. And the final question that we have populated on, this, on the webinar slides that we received before today is this one. Is the funding going to end in five years or will there be an opportunity for renewal? The NIH Common Fund has committed to support this diversity program for 10 years with the expectation that this time frame will be required to develop and assess new approaches to training and mentoring. All awards will have a five-year project period progress of the program will be assessed throughout the five-year period. Provided that innovative and potentially transformative approaches are de being developed, an FOA for continuation of the program will be released. Competition for the second phase of the program may also be open to new applicants as well as continuing awardees. All applicants are encouraged to consider sustainability beyond the external funding. As I said, that was the last question that we received before the webinar. What I'd like to do at this time is open the floor to Dr. Jennifer Alvidrez, who's receiving questions via the email. Okay, first question. Does the $1.75 million budget limit include institutional FNA, or is this added on top? The budget limit is for total costs, so the $1.75 million does include institutional FNA. Does this mean, does the budget limit mean that the total budget across five years is up to 8.75 million? That is correct. The RFA specifies that the CEC will coordinate the annual meeting. Is this also expected for the kickoff meeting? This would only give the CEC one month to plan the meeting. So the NIH staff will really take the lead to um, uh, for the kickoff meeting and then turn over that responsibility um, for subsequent annual meetings to the CEC. Should sustainability be addressed in the application or will that be addressed in the potential renewal application in five years? So this question about sustainability for the CEC is more about how sustainability may be evaluated in the build and the mentoring programs. Not so much the potential sustainability of the CEC itself, although sustainability of evaluation efforts could be addressed in the application. Will the successful CEC applicant be expected to have prior experience as an NIH CEC? No, this is not a specific um, expectation. The expectation is that successful applicants will have some experience with program evaluation, particularly for workforce or diversity initiatives or training or mentorship programs, as well as experience uh, coordinating larger efforts and consortia. So this may occur as part of a, another NIH CEC, but also a variety of other kinds of experiences. What assumptions should be made in preparing a budget about the data collection resources being committed by the build institutions and the mentoring network? Because the specific evaluation metrics and approaches will be worked out, by the overall consortia once the awards are made, it's not really possible to give concrete guidance about what the build or mentoring um, awardees, how they will allocate their budgets. Um, so there will be flexibility regarding this um, after award to, um, to align the budgets with the specific data um, collection, coordination, and evaluation costs. Is the CEC expected to conduct its own self-evaluation, or is this something that NIH will do? So this is primarily something that NIH will do as part of its evaluation of all diversity initiatives that involve um, workforce development or training. So I'll 
read a couple of questions that came in for the earlier webinars that are relevant um, for the CEC as well. Are we required to respond to the FOA and the PHS 398 application instructions? Yes. All applicants should carefully read and respond to the application instructions in the FOA as well as in the PHS 398. If specific elements are mentioned in the FOA application instructions, for example, the research strategy for a particular core, this means that the instructions for completing this element are different from the general instructions in the PHS 398. If no specific instructions are provided in the FOA for a particular element, applicants should follow instructions regarding that element in the PHS 398 instructions. What is the mandatory executive steering committee? And is the CEC applicant expected to form this committee and discuss it in the application? The executive steering committee will be established after awards are made and will be comprised of representatives from each build, NRMN, and CEC award, as well as NIH staff. So this, this is something that will take place after the awards, so it's not necessary for the CEC applicant to describe the composition of the executive steering committee. The CEC applicant should describe as much as possible the, the, compos the proposed composition of the CEC steering committee. And those are all the questions we have received specifically about the CEC. Thank you, Dr. Alvidrez. And thank you all on the phone for the questions and thoughtful consideration of the program. Uh, for more information, I, I want to um, make sure everyone knows that the email address will stay open and we will receive questions moving forward um, at buildnrmncc at nih.gov. If you find that you have additional questions, please feel free to use that email and we will respond to, uh, to your questions. In addition, this slide provides several points of contact that may be useful to you. If you have program-related questions, please feel free to contact me, Pamela Thornton. If you have questions related to the peer review process, follow up with Dr. Anna Riley, who is the SRO for the CEC effort. And if you have questions related to grants management, including budget questions, please contact Ms. Priscilla Grant. I want to thank you again for your participation in this webinar and especially your interest in the CEC. Thank you. All right. Uh, this concludes the final segment of our webinar today. Please remember uh, that the slides and recording from today's webinar will be available on the NIH Common Fund website within the next three to four weeks. I'm going to pull up the slide so you have the link to that website. They're at the bottom of your screen. commonfund.nih.gov slash diversity. We encourage you to share this information with your potential collaborators who may not have been able to attend today's session. And the archived webinar will be broken into separately viewable segments uh, uh, corresponding to each funding opportunity announcement. So you don't have to uh, look at, uh, review the entire webinar if you're just interested in one of the RFAs. But again, it would be uh, advisable to familiarize yourself with all three initiatives. So thank you for participating in the, uh, the webinar today, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>